Good afternoon and welcome to our second show of Wellness from Within. Marie, my co-host, and me, Jocelyn, are going to help you maneuver this world of infomercial medicine, because that's what's out there. That's a great term. Marie has that one. I love that. <laughs> so today's show, we're going to talk about right or wrong. Is there a right or a wrong type of medicine? And what are we going to choose? Do we choose traditional? Do we choose TikTok? Do we choose what's in a book? What do we do? Do we listen to grandma? There's so many choices out there. And are they right or are they wrong? For everybody or for you or for me? It's individual. And we have to learn to be able to walk the path and figure out what's going on. We're going to try and talk about why do we believe everything we do has to fall in this category or that category? Why does it have to be absolute? Why do we believe it has to be absolute? Why are we so set in our ways? Maybe it's just the information highway and it's coming at us at 100 miles an hour, you know, just binging off our heads like, you know, raindrops the last 10 days we've had in New Hampshire. Um, we also need to determine what does connecting to your body within have to do with any of this? I'm going to throw my glasses on because I'm straining here. So on that note, do you find yourself wondering, what do I do? I got a headache. I've got an arm ache. I got a backache. Whatever it may be, I, I just don't feel well. And nothing seems to help. And you're, you're, you've, you're just pretending to be a doctor and, and just take a vitamin or take a pill or do this or do that. That's not the answer. That's not the, the way you want to go about this. So what do you do? Sit quietly, listen to yourself, listen to your mind, listen to your body. It's not easy. I'm not good at it. Marie knows that. Constantly having to help me with those things because I'm not quiet enough inside and you have to be quiet. What is your mind, your spirit, your body telling you? We need to listen. There's no one correct answer for you or for me. So wellness from within, within you, your body, this, this show will help dispel the myths of all the types of healing out there and help you and me navigate the complicated world of infomercial medicine. So on that note, and me yakking away, welcome <laughs> back, Miss Marie. So glad to have you and uh, find out what's been happening in the last couple of weeks and where are we going today? What do we need to well, know? Today, we're going to talk about what's right or wrong in medicine. Because everybody has a definition of either they like alternative, they like the complementary model of medicine, and one they define as better than the other. Some people don't like any medicine at all. Mm -hmm. The problem is there is no right or wrong in anything, but we, we, set, we do that with diets. There's a right diet, a wrong diet. Pull, pull, pull up, we do it in politics. There's a right way and a wrong way. We have to get to the point where we can just sit in the information and decide if it's right for us. Okay. Because as you delve into self-healing, it's not just about using your doctor, you know, your surgeon, your hospital, your alternative practitioner. You have to be part of the healing because there's so much you can do before you even get to them. Mm -hmm. So defining why you believe there's a right or wrong is going to help you find more right answers for yourself. Okay. And be deciding what you believe is right for you, because doesn't that play a part of it as well? You can't just yeah, always take everybody else's. Yeah, the thing about having a right or wrong in your head, mm -hmm. my favorite saying, as we talked about last time, is chaos breeds chaos and balance breeds peace. So as soon as you believe one type of medicine is better than the other, you're creating chaos for yourself and you're blocking good information from coming your way. Okay. So you might think that um, I have to take B vitamins and I have to take... Um, another type of supplement because I read that this is this and this depletes me so I have to eat this when all along your body might be telling you just to eat more asparagus and it's going to cure your problem. Gotcha. So when you start thinking you have to do something you're not letting the other information come through. So I tell people if it comes in your space mm -hmm. read it evaluate it and then decide, what am I looking for me and does it fit what I want? Because as soon as you have a strong opinion against something, 
you shut yourself off from hearing any of the other information that's coming with it. Like the little kids, la, 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 la. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so you have to, and, and the biggest thing I tell people, and my other favorite saying is, uncomfortable is change happens. Yes. Because when we believe in a right or wrong, you know, my, here's a perfect example. I had a client ask me the other day, do I eat only organic food? And I started laughing. He goes, what's so funny? I go, because there's such a belief out there that our food supply is so depleted and you should only eat organic or you're not going to be healthy. Mm-hmm. And I said to him, I tell people first to look in the mirror and ask yourself if you're actually eating whole food. <laughs> Correct. Right. Because a lot of people can't afford the organics, so then they believe, well, it's not that important or whatever it is. And then they make a story in their head Mm -hmm. or they don't want to change that part about them. So they make another story in their head. I mean, we have to start from the bare basics before we jump all the way to the organics. What are you putting on your plate? Is it whole food? Because 90% of the people, if they just change to whole food, they're going to get better. Correct. And when you say whole food, what do you, what do you mean? What's the theory? If grandma doesn't recognize it as food, you probably shouldn't eat it. Okay. Anything that's processed. The way I look at it is, I call it unchewed or chewed food. Uh. So if you pick up a piece of broccoli, it's unchewed, untouched. If you pick up a cheese, it it's been chewed up by the machines, it's been chewed up by the ovens, it's been chewed up by the processing. So your body can't do anything with that. That's good for you. Correct. You can break down the broccoli. You can get enzymes out of it. You can put it through your digestion. You can derive tons of nutrients. It's fiber. Out of it. So I tell people: Are you eating? Unchewed or chewed foods already, already chewed foods. I like that analogy So better. stay away yep. from the already chewed foods because <laughs> it kind of gives it a little bit of a gross connotation so you kind of can get more into it versus mm-hmm. saying processed foods. What does that mean? Yeah. Think about it. Is it already chewed for you? If it is, kind of, you can have it. I'm not saying you shouldn't have it. I'm saying there should be less of it in your diet. All right, more, more balance. And just by doing that alone, you're going to start to feel better. So as far as the organic thing goes, do I eat some organics? Yes, because I always had chemical sensitivities and severe allergies ever since I was a kid. And I noticed when I do certain foods that way, I feel better. So I let my body dictate which Mm -hmm. foods I do. I don't do them all. Right. But there's a a percentage of them that I do feel a lot better when I do it. Interesting. So that's why I choose those. I don't choose it because I read something and it's a rule that you have to to be healthy. Because there's rules for everything at this point. Oh, yeah. And, and if there isn't, you can so, make up your own. Yeah, they're so, <laughs> I, I see people so paralyzed because, and they're eating things that nobody would ever eat because they just feel like they have to eat these things in, the, in their rawest, rawest forms and they have to break them down and they can't eat this and they can't eat that. And I say, ask your body how it feels. But as far as there being a right or wrong, it all comes down to let the information come through you first. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't, you're going to get yourself in a really bad situation. You know, I have people all the time, they might have cancer, but they have such a right or wrong in their head that it's so catastrophic for them that they can't even consider doing the opposite, the one that they think is wrong. And then when they do need it, even to take it is so detrimental to them because it's so negative going through them. I mean, I've had people say to me, yeah, I got to go get my poison treatment today. I'm like, don't tell your body that. What are you doing? You know, oh, because wow. they think chemo. Oh, it's bad. People- so uh, on, t- on top of ha- having to do something to make yourself better, they're mentally mm-hmm. making it worse for themselves. And so now the body's like, oh, this is terrible. Mm-hmm. And, and everything's in a negative. And I tell people, when you get cancer... You don't always know why. Mm -hmm. So if you don't absolutely know why, the West, the complementary model of medicine is going to buy you time to figure it out. The alternative is not. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have an understanding of why and you're making lifestyle changes and you're making, you know, modifications in your stress levels because you have a complete understanding that I created this cancer myself, fine, go the alternative route. But if you don't, There's a great track record with the complementary route to get you to the point, because if nothing changes in you, nothing can change in your health profile going forward. Mm -hmm. People have this misunderstanding. If I do the medicine, therefore I'm better. If nothing changes in you, you're going to keep repeating history. Correct. 
no so matter what it is. It's going to be repeat, rinse, Diabetes, repeat, rinse, if you don't control your blood sugars, you're going to keep adding on the meds and it's going to keep going down that same track. The medicine isn't curing you. The medicine is holding you at bay mm -hmm. until you the can, next step. Right. Till you, you figure out. You have to be the one that brings it back. And say, okay, I now found out I'm a type 2 diabetic, but if I change my lifestyle, I mean, I think type 2 diabetes can be a gift because it's one of those things. If you find out early enough and you literally change your lifestyle, start exercising, cut your carbs, lose some weight, you get your health back indefinitely forever. If you don't, you're going down this negative Correct. path. It's like a plus plus. But it actually has that certain amount of time that you can reverse it and get your life back. Wow. So it's just a good wake up call for you to say, OK, I got to do something different and a, and a positive outlook. And, and that is worth everything. Right. But what happens with the right or wrong? Is now you, you get diagnosed with type two diabetes and it's dinner time. And your mind is so I have to eat my food this way. And that's the only right way to eat it. You know, my favorite example is pork pie. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to somebody's house for Christmas and pork pie, if it's made mm. grandma's way, is good pork pie. If it's not, I'm not eating it. It's not good pork pie. And there's such a right or wrong in how families derive whether pork pie is right or not. So they're either going to eat it or not. And people do that when they get diabetes and stuff and heart disease because the food they eat is either right or wrong to them. And then when you tell them to change their lifestyle and their diet, they do it for about three months. But then they're so burnt out and overwhelmed, they just go back to what they know because that's more right to them. Mm -hmm. That's more right to them. And they're not, they're not open to change because they stuck with the right and wrong. Because they didn't find out enough information. They're mm -hmm. just absorbing it as, I have to do this. I'm taking in the information the doctor told me to, so I'm doing it. But it never becomes yours unless you truly understand the information, understand why your body wants it, assess how your body is doing with the change. Mm -hmm. You'll know whether you're then feeling you'll better or not. Then you'll own it. But if you just go through the motions, mm -hmm. our right and wrongs of how we see life is going to eventually take over, no matter who we are. Right. And so you're never open to change. And it's always, well, I have to do this. I have to do that. And you're not sitting in a little quiet space saying, did I feel better? Do I feel better today? Do I feel better this week? Do I feel better today than I did last week same time right. and that's what we're not doing that's what i'm hearing you say is that we just this is what he said this is what i do i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it Turn like the little engine i i know i can i know i can i know i should but we never take the time to assess how do we feel right. in this body and i have a client recently who had to have bypass surgery and they put him on the beta blockers, you know, the traditional cholesterol medication and everything else. And he's totally against complementary medicine. But he did the surgery because he was kind of forced by his kids and stuff like that. So he comes to see me and tells me he's not taking any of the meds. And I ask him why, and he tells me because they're all bad for him. And I said, well, I said, you're not in the body that you were in. Mm -hmm. I said, so some of these meds help with the adjustments to your new being. And then I explained to him what a beta blocker does and all the details. And he's looking at me and goes, well, I need to take that. Yes, I go, you do. yeah, you do. <laughs> he goes, why didn't the doctor tell me that? And I go, I can't explain why the doctor didn't explain that to you. Mm -hmm. But maybe he did and you were so blocked that it being medicine that you couldn't hear it. Did he go into the details that I went into? Probably not. Correct. Because I can say it pretty much in a way that you're going to be like, oh, my God, I want to take that because, yeah. So it's just a matter of. He had to look in the mirror and decide for himself what he really wanted for himself first. Mm -hmm. Then he could get rid of the wrong in his head. Right. Right. Because he didn't want to hurt the grafts that they had just put in. That was never his intention in denying mm -hmm. the medication. And it probably he probably didn't connect those dots either. He did because not. Because he was so I set in the no, no, no. That he was going to risk the grafts that they had just done. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, well, I can't do that. Right. 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 So... I think that complementary medicine has to take that step forward, too, and be willing to talk to people more because now they have such a right or wrong when they're sitting in the office, the practitioner shuts down. Correct. On both sides. Mm -hmm. The minute you mention you're taking a med, the alternative might shut you down and start pushing their stuff because they think the med is bad or the other one's doing the complementary is doing the same thing because they think the supplement's bad. But nobody's hearing what you want for you or explaining and helping you decide right. what is right for you. Mm -hmm. And maybe why you feel that way and, and talk a little bit about that, which is what you're doing. Right. So I tell people, 
If you don't get rid of the right or wrong and let the information flood through you, you're letting other people decide your fate. And who do you trust enough with your fate? You should trust you're yourself. You're trusting the internet. You're trusting your friends. You're trusting things you watched on TikTok. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're trusting this fear inside of you that's shutting you down from letting any of your answers come forward. So we have to sit with ourselves. And my work, Connecting to Your Body Within, again, it's the stuff that I have in my courses on my um, website, in my book and stuff. It shows you how to wake up that part of you that talks louder than your head. Mm -hmm. Because that part of you that knows whether this is right for you or not is going to shut up that voice that keeps shutting everything down. And the only way you can do that is to start becoming present when you're in that right or wrong, because otherwise the chaos of you reacting, no, I won't do it, I'm not going to have it, you know, is pretty crazy. And it just keeps shutting you down over and over again. So it's, and you actually never move forward. You don't. And you sometimes actually move backwards. You don't. Right. Because you just, you just can't move that foot. You're paralyzed, I actually. see people in chronic pain. The minute they exercise, it hurts, so they don't exercise. You sit too long, it hurts. So you got to get up and exercise, but it hurts. So nothing ever changes. Mm -hmm. And I say to them, you got to take one day at a time because some days you have to push your body and some days you have to pull back. No, it hurts. I can't do it. When I did that last time, it hurt. I go, but the more you sit, the more you're going to hurt. Mm -hmm. And there's a, per there's, a, there, there's a point where you can push past that. But people are so afraid of it being wrong and they're going to hurt themselves, you know, and then they read. But yet you're already hurt. So how do you? <laughs> <laughs> but it's crippling. It's yes. crippling in our minds because we're not sitting in that moment saying, well, maybe I can do 20 steps today. No, I did them yesterday and they hurt me. I can't do them. Okay, so, so do 19. But, you, <laughs> but you're so paralyzed you're and so, so frozen paralyzed. that you can't even say, okay, I'll do 19. Right. You can't it, it What just occurred to me, what I just felt and what I heard in my head was that we're incapable of negotiating with our own head. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because we're so, it's the same way you raise your kids. It's the same way you have a relationship with your husband or your wife or your partner. You know, it's the same way when you're in a job with your coworkers. We all have roles that we play that have rights or wrongs in them and they dictate outcomes all the time. And then we live in reaction of that outcome and then nothing ever changes and mm -hmm. nothing ever goes more to a better place. Gotcha. But if you can take a step back instead of getting into the chaos and start watching yourself and what your role is in all of it, mm -hmm. you can start to really change the course of your life. That's uh, that Because we all very, live in very, very reactive behavior. But the key is, as soon as you react to something, say I say to you, you know, I really think you should try to eat asparagus, but you don't like asparagus. I don't like asparagus. It's green and it makes my <laughs> pee smell funny. Right. <laughs> But I have people Sorry, say, I had to throw that in. <laughs> it's the texture. It's the texture. And I go, well, what is texture? What is the texture that you're afraid of? You know, it's mm -hmm. like a little kid who can't try a new food because he thinks that everything's going to taste like his chicken nuggets and french fries. Yep. You have to explain to them, you know, this one's going to feel a little slimy. Mm -hmm. This is going to feel a list, but the creaminess of it is really going to make a difference. So if you can take the food on its merit, instead of all that dialogue that you've got going on, you can start making changes in your diet. Mm hmm well, I have to tell you that, so all of you that don't like asparagus or broccoli, I'll give you one word, air fryer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you can make asparagus spears that are like chips. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I agree. I love my air fryer. I'm a huge air fryer. Yeah, I mean, but th there's another myth. Oh. It's not good for you the way that it cooks like a microwave. It kills all the food. You shouldn't cook in a microwave. I had Which... somebody working in my office at one point. Every time she went to go cook her lunch, she would put it in the microwave. And she says, yeah, I know. I'm killing this. And I'm putting all this radiation and everything else. I go, why do you tell your body that? You're just warming why up you your just... lunch. Yeah. You're just warming up your It's going to be lunch. warm. You're going to love it. <laughs> because she's still eating it anyway. Yeah. But she has this fear because she has no other option to warm up her lunch. So now she's going overboard and giving her body all these negative messages. And you just Imprinting can't do that. it right onto yeah. what you're eating and drinking, which does happen because so everything's a vibration. If you eat your lunch and it poops you out and you feel really tired, ask why. Was it the microwave? Try to eat the same thing out of a microwave. 
if it doesn't make you tired, then maybe it is the microwave and mm -hmm. you shouldn't use the microwave. You know, if you eat something and it makes you really tired and it's not the microwave, find out why. Maybe it's too many carbs. Correct. Maybe there's something in the vegetable that doesn't agree with you. Correct. You don't know. You don't know. But we put everything in this tunnel of reaction of right or wrong that we can't get past it to get to the next step. Wow. It's wow. pretty crazy. It is pretty crazy. crazy. And past experiences dictate that as well. Because the whole thing with the spirituality world is living in the present moment. Mm -hmm. And everybody thinks it's about sitting there chewing your food and you know, experiencing the birds outside. Living in the present moment is really about living in that moment without blinders. So you can make the decision for the next step of your journey. Because if you're living in the right or the wrong and the fears and the beliefs and all that stuff, you can't see what's really in front of you to get you to the next leg. You're, you're making a decision based on what happened in the past mm -hmm. or where your future is going according to all that dialogue. Right. You want to just sit right, right in it because Lynn's actually not upset today. Oh, maybe I can get more out of Lynn today than I normally could because I'm not <laughs> going to really talk to Lynn. But if you live in what, you know, you had a bad moment with her. Right. Now you're never going to talk to her again. Correct. And you're tainted. But she's your answer to get you your new car or whatever it is. You mm -hmm. totally miss that opportunity. But if you look at her, well, maybe she was just having a bad day. Because we have this dialogue all the time that stops us. So being in the present moment, sure, you can sit there and chew your food and see how your food feels. But it's more about being in the moment of the day to see that you're just missed your kid asking you for help or you just missed your husband doing something else or you missed that you forgot something like I forgot something on the way here. Yeah. I have or that kid. hummingbird that's right by the flowers next to you that you should be enjoying while you're eating that food. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. you blink, they're gone. Yeah. I mean, if you just sit there quietly and that's what we don't do. Right. We're, we're trained not to just keep moving, keep talking, keep, keep pushing along and, and we need to stop. It doesn't mean don't do anything, but it means stop and listen, stop and feel, stop and smell. When they say stop and smell the roses, they're not kidding. Right. It right. truly, truly, truly. And observe yourself when you're doing it so you can see how you're smelling the roses just to see what you're like. Because you don't even know what you're like because mm -hmm. we live in reaction to everything. Yep. And if people want to learn more, I mean... My website's marienotig.com. You can check out my course about just sitting quiet and it helps you connect on different levels. It helps you see your body within from different ways and to really spark that interest inside of yourself. If not, there's plenty of other teachers out there. And I'm not the only one. Yep. You know, this show is designed exactly. to find the one that works for, for you. you. And there's no right there's and there's no, no wrong. right or wrong. I'm just one resource. You're a resource. Anybody we bring on the show is a resource. And you get to decide, does that feel right to me or not? And when we do start bringing guests forward, which we're going to do today, we have a first one. You have to ask yourself, if you find her work different than something you would ever do, are you making sarcastic comments about it right out of the gate? Mm -hmm. Why? Or are you and open to hearing? Exactly. Or just... It's just information. It's, it is. It's and just you want to learn something. And so obviously, look at it as learning. if there's a certification and all kinds of people are doing it, it is helping people. It may not be the right for you, but it is helping, helping people. Right. And you don't so want to put right that down. So it's right for somebody. Buddy. You know, I tell people the reason why there's so many makes of cars is because we're all very different. And there's no one car for one person. There's no one car <laughs> for one person. But we seem to think everything else has to fit in that box. That's, that's and medicine is one of them. There is no right or wrong. It could be a supplement that you need. It could be a drug that you need. It could be somebody's hug that you need. It mm -hmm. could be you changing your lifestyle. It could be so we want you to kind of get up close and personal with yourself and find out what you need. And you have to ask yourself, what does healing mean to me? So I can go looking for those answers. And that's a big one. If you don't know what you're looking for. You're not going to find it. Healing could be you're just looking to make sure your cholesterol is right. Or you want to age gracefully and learn everything about yourself. Or you want to exercise more. Or you want to heal your relationships along with your body and everything else. So you got to find out. You know, and I have some free ebooks on my website with that. Just answer the questions and find out for yourself. What am I looking for? Then you can start looking for answers. But until you know, there's nothing you can, you can do. do. Exactly. Well, on that note, we're going.
going to take a break and we're going to bring in our very first guest. We are very excited to have our first guest on our second know. show. So we are marching forward and bringing all sorts of opportunities and information that you can decide and learn about. So we will see you. We will come back. Thank you for joining us.